Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a brush that is going to paint reminiscent of the pattern on a crosswalk. Lots of bars in a row. And thank you so much to the viewer who actually asked the question as to whether I could make this video. I think it's a really interesting process. So I've just created a brand new document in Photoshop. It doesn't matter how big it is. I'm going to the Layers panel and I'm going to add a new layer because I want my brush just to be on a new layer right now because I'm going to delete it as soon as I've made it. So I'm going to the Marquee tool here and I'm just going to drag out a sort of shape. So this is going to be the shape that my brush is going to be. So if you want a bigger sort of pattern. If you want a larger one, then make a larger one. I actually want mine to be quite small, so I'm just drawing a fairly narrow one. I've got black as my foreground color. Of course, we can get to that by just clicking on the black and white selector here. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and that's Option on a Mac and press the Backspace or the Backspace Delete key. That just fills my shape here with the color. Just going to click away from the shape. I've got my move tool selected and my shape is selected. I'm going to edit and then define brush preset and I'm going to call this brush crosswalk brush and I'll click OK. Now I don't want any of this left. I don't want the selection so I'm going to choose select deselect or control or command D and I'm going to remove this layer because I don't want it anymore. I'm going to add a new layer because I want somewhere to paint. And then I'm going to select my brush tool. Well, the brush tool is automatically selected for me in most recent versions of Photoshop because I just made a brush. It's assuming because you made it, you want to use it. It's selected up here and I've got my black paint still. And so I can see how it's painting, which is not very satisfactory, but we're on the way. I'm going to click on the brush settings option here. That brings up the brush settings panel. Let's just go and grab that where we can see it. As I'm working, I'm going to paint on this document. I'm going to press Control Z. So every time you see something disappear, that's because I press Control Z just to remove it so we can focus on the changes that we've made to the brush. So I'm going to the brush tip shape first of all, and here I can change the size of the brush. So that's how tall it is. So I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so it is less tall. Now it's not painting like a crosswalk because these little bars would be separated from each other. To do that, I'm going to increase the spacing and I'm watching down here because as soon as these little bars are spaced apart from each other, I'm going to see it in that little preview window. And so this is what we've got now. The bars are spaced out. So I'm just going to leave that there. That's pretty good. Let's have a look at what happens when I paint downwards. We're not getting that crosswalk look. When I paint on an angle, sort of. When I paint horizontally, we're getting the crosswalk look. So if I wanted this brush to sort of follow me a little bit better, we could get it to behave a little bit better. Let's just remove all of those and let's go to the tool that is going to allow us to have the brush follow us. So that's Shape Dynamics. So I'm going to click the checkbox here and then click on Shape Dynamics. And what we're looking at is this angle jitter area and it's the controls. So let's go here and select Direction. If you're using a mouse, the two tools that you've got for this are direction and initial direction. If you're using a pen, then you can try pen pressure and pen tilt and just see how they work for you. If between the two of them, you're going to get the effect that you want for this brush. But I'm just concentrating on people who are using a regular mouse. So let's go to direction. Let's paint downwards. Hmm, the brush is painting a whole lot better this time. Let's paint across and it's working across as well. And on the diagonal, it's sort of flipping around and facing along the direction of our brush. So even though it seems like it's pointing upright, as soon as I press the mouse button, the left mouse button, it's rotating around and following me as I paint. So direction is probably the option that you want, but let's just have a look at initial direction. So initial direction, I'm painting downwards. Again, it's working just fine. Across, again, working just fine. On an angle, you can see that the curve at the end here is not looking so good. So initial direction, maybe not the effect that you want. Let's just undo those and let's see how the brush behaves with direction 
when we start curving around you can see it's following us a whole lot better when we move in a different direction it's always going to jam up in these corners if you want it to jam up less you could increase the spacing but if you draw in tight corners you are going to find this effect around the edge let's have a look at the diagonal and swing up so you can see that direction is probably most of the time going to be the setting that you want. And of course this brush, even though we create it as black, and you do create all your brushes as black or grayscale anyway, you can just select another paint color and of course it's going to paint in color. So I hope this helps you see how easy it is to create your own brushes in Photoshop and have them paint the way you want them to paint. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.